Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. A lot of us are locked down right now and unable to leave our homes. Many of us are glued to our phones right now looking for the latest news about you know what. YouTube won't actually let us say the word. But it does rhyme with Miley Cyrus. And if I say that word that rhymes with Miley Cyrus, well, this video will most likely get demonetized. I mean, in all fairness, I did do a video about whether the Miley Cyrus could evolve into a zombie disease. Anyway, since or not, today we're going to be doing a deep dive in how Miley Cyrus has affected our world. This massive global shutdown is in a way the biggest social experiment that's ever been conducted in human history. And it's impacted a wide range of things. And so here are 50 numbers that illustrate the impact that the Miley Cyrus shutdown has had on all of us. Here in the States, the national shutdown has had a huge impact on unemployment numbers. In the last two weeks of March, 10 million people applied for unemployment benefits in the States. Amongst the hardest hit were the leisure and hospitality industry, which alone lost 459,000 jobs. And this is just the beginning. We won't know the full extent of the economic impact of the Miley Cyrus event until it's finally over. A Marist poll conducted in mid-March saw that 18% of Americans had lost their jobs or reduced work hours. At the peak of the Great Depression, U.S. unemployment rates were close to 25%. At the height of the Great Depression in 2009, unemployment in America was around 9.9%. The Fed has estimated that unemployment rates at the end of this ordeal can be as high as 32.1%, the highest it's ever been. And that's only here in the States. Now, there are a few companies and industries that are going against the trend and are actually hiring. Amazon is in the process of hiring 100,000 new employees to meet demand. Many of these new hires were just recently laid off. Their new jobs will begin at the end of April. Walmart will be hiring 150,000 new employees to make sure their operations are running smoothly as well. Of course, these jobs being created are not enough to replace all those that have been lost. And that could be a problem because 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Which means that millions of Americans will have to decide between staying home and keeping themselves safe or going out there and risking their lives potentially to make some money for their family. A Federal Reserve study shows that 40% of Americans could not afford a $400 emergency. Early reports are showing that Miley Cyrus is affecting low-income neighborhoods disproportionately because a lot of these individuals still have to go out and work. Right now, three out of four Americans are under orders to stay at home. Globally, a third of humanity is also stuck at home. And that number is only going to continue to increase because we're not really sure how long Miley Cyrus is going to be sticking around and whether loosening restrictions will actually make her come back twice as hard. The current recommendation for those who are potentially exposed to Miley Cyrus is to stay at home and isolate themselves for up to two weeks. For all of our Jewish and brothers and sisters out there who are celebrating Passover, Chag Sameach, and hopefully this will be a good year to kind of understand how the Jewish people felt in ancient Egypt when the ten plagues were keeping everyone inside. It's one of the most popular holidays in America. Around 80% of Americans celebrate it in one way or another. And the Mass during Easter is usually one of the most popular in churches all around the country every year. It's also an economic holiday. The average American usually spends around $140.62, which together adds up to about $16.4 billion in Easter spending. Just another line on the bar graph that's going to dip because of Miley Cyrus. But it's not all doom and gloom. For instance, our world is better prepared for a global shutdown than it's ever been, thanks to the increased connectivity we've seen in the last few decades. For instance, in 2020, 45% of the world's population owns a smartphone. That's 3.5 billion people who could potentially be isolated but still can talk and video chat with their loved ones and family members. The number of internet users globally is around 4.5 billion, or 58.7% of the population. So it comes to no surprise that during this global shutdown, we're seeing an increase of certain behaviors. For instance, Twitter has reported a 71% increase in video game related tweets. And in mid-March, Verizon came out with numbers showing a 75% increase in video game traffic. Steam, a popular gaming app, has set records for users three weeks in a row. On April 24th, over 24 million users were all logged on at its peak hour. I'm currently playing Half-Life Alex on VR. 
Data on Steam is showing a record number of VR sets being connected to Steam in March, 1.7 million. The technology has gotten pretty good over the years, and for someone like me who's stuck in a tiny apartment, it's basically the only escape I have, which is probably why VR headsets everywhere are basically sold out. In France, digital download sales increased 180% during the first week of the lockdown. The same thing happened in Italy during its first week of lockdown, a 174.9% increase in digital sales. And if we look at the UK and Germany, before they were locked down, digital sales had increased already by 67.4% and 60.2%. Even consoles and physical game purchases are up, so much so that the WHO is actually recommending online gaming as a good way to socialize during the lockdown. But of course, not everyone is playing games. A lot of people are actually watching them as well. Twitch has experienced a 31% growth in viewership during the first week of the lockdown. And YouTube gaming has seen a 15% increase over the first week as well. Personally, me and the Bens, American and British Ben, have looked at all of our channel's traffic and estimated a 40% decrease in ad revenue. This is because there's a smaller volume of ads and cheaper ads because a lot of major companies have actually pulled out their ad campaigns uh, in the face of this economic crisis we're facing. But don't worry, we've made preparations for emergencies like this. Save your donations for actual frontline workers like the people in the healthcare system or the individuals who are still running around out there keeping our infrastructure intact. Companies like ours are actually pretty uh, well structured for the apocalypse. We have a very small staff. We all work remotely and even though we are seeing a decrease in revenue We can still operate and keep ourselves running for the time being It's the larger productions such as movies or TV shows that are in a lot more trouble by the first week of the quarantine in the States 120,000 film industry workers already have lost their jobs Many of these individuals are freelancers who are actually stuck in this highly competitive industry and they depend on incoming contracts to sustain their livelihoods and that's probably not going to be very easy to do in the coming days. For instance, Netflix has suspended all of their future projects until this whole Miley Cyrus thing is over. Warner Brothers has done the same to 70 of its TV shows and movie projects. Big blockbusters like Avatar 2 and 3, Mission Impossible 7, the live action Little Mermaid movie, Jurassic World Dominion, Fast and Furious 9, and the Uncharted film will all be affected. Thankfully, developers of the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 said that there won't be any Miley Cyrus related delays for their game. The Last of Us Part 2, unfortunately, will be delayed inevitably. Now, movies like Contagion and Outbreak are usually pretty sensational and they'll highlight the worst in humanity during crisis, but in my opinion, humanity has handled itself quite well. The majority of people have shown that they are caring, giving, uh, courageous, and very humane. In 2018, Americans gave $427.71 billion to charity. That's an average of $1,307 billion per every American. And although we don't know how much money has been donated during this current crisis, I'm sure that will also be a record-breaking number. As of April 7th, this one CDC fundraiser has made more than $6 million, which Facebook will match with their own $6 million. One landlord in Brooklyn, Mario Salerno, has forgiven rent for all 200 of the tenants in his building for the month of April. The average rent cost in his area is around $3,000 per unit, so this whole entire kind gesture could lose Salerno $600,000. Dave Stupka from Oklahoma donated $25,000 worth of masks to local healthcare workers from his construction business, whereas Matt Colvin had to donate most of his 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizers after he was accused of hoarding and price gouging. Now, supply and demand has definitely increased the price of certain items. An N95 mask prior to Miley Cyrus would have cost around a dollar a piece, and now they're selling for as high as $15 a piece, which has forced businesses and governments to come up with unorthodox ways to meet the demand. In Vietnam, several garment factories and textile businesses retooled their production lines to meet the federal government's daily need of 10 million masks. Just recently, Trump reached a deal with 3M to produce 55.0 million high-quality masks each month. And earlier in March, Governor of New York Andrew Cuomo had state prisoners making 100,000 gallons of hand sanitizer a week. And it's not just medical supplies that people are going crazy over. Americans have spent $1.4 billion on toilet paper from February 28th to March 21st, 
while at the same time more than 43 million Americans are still using food stamps, with that number increasing every day with more and more people becoming unemployed. And this is where a bunch of private philanthropists have stepped in and started donating massive amounts of money. Jeff Bezos donated $100 million to the American food banks. Oprah Winfrey added another $10 million. Meanwhile, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is spending $125 million on helping companies develop a vaccine. Jack Dorsey is pledging $1 billion for relief all around the world. That's pretty impressive when you consider the fact that he only has a net worth of $3.6 billion. That means he's donating more than a quarter of his net worth. Bloomberg, who recently spent $650 million on a failed presidential campaign, is donating $40 million also to fight uh, Miley Cyrus all across the world. Our free market system encourages people to accumulate as much wealth as possible, but during moments of crisis, we also expect those individuals to help out and do their part. Big Pharma all of a sudden becomes crucial to national defense, and rock star billionaires must now act as global ambassadors and shift supplies to wherever Miley Cyrus pops up. For the first time in human history, we are all united against the same thing, a threat that transcends political, religious, and cultural barriers and makes all other disputes seem petty and silly. As of April 7, 2020, there have been 1,478,288 cases, and very likely millions more in the coming months, not including all of those cases that went undetected or were covered up. As of April 7th, we have lost more than 86,744 people, and more than 100 of those people were healthcare workers. On a brighter note, as of April 7th, 316,795 individuals have recovered and survived. Many of these people are now sharing their stories on social media to give the rest of us hope, and some of them are even donating plasma so that their antibodies can help those who are newly affected survive. It's actually a pretty old technique, and it hasn't been regularly used on such a wide scale for a long time. As a matter of fact, during the Spanish flu, plasma therapy cut fatalities in half. But without a safe vaccine or treatment, it's basically the best thing we have right now. We're going to uncharted territory, and it's crucial that every individual step in and do their part. Whether it's something as simple as staying at home or getting groceries for an elderly neighbor, or shrinking themselves to a tiny size and fighting the virus on its home turf. One of the positives of this entire situation is now we have a newfound appreciation for the most selfless sectors of our workforce. I'm talking about the nurses who take care of strangers as if they were their own family members. Then there are ER doctors and family doctors who pass on lucrative specializations and salaries to take care of our communities and save the critically ill. What about the millions of drivers still keeping our economy running, delivering supplies, goods, food, and postage? What about the people still working in grocery stores, pharmacies, and other essential shops? The people who are watching right now are finally getting the credit they deserve, not celebrities or politicians and media pundits. As the crisis worsens before it gets better, these ordinary frontline workers will need as much support as we can give them. So for a second, forget about all the news and politics and screaming uh, that we see in social media and on TV. Focus on your community and the people around you. Focus on what truly is essential and help those that are vulnerable around you so that we can all survive for the next few weeks and months. Current CDC models project casualties in America as high as 240,000 people. One model created by the Imperial College of London estimates that the Miley Cyrus could cost 40 million casualties worldwide if unchecked. As long as we continue pouring money into finding a vaccine and treatments, as long as we continue supporting our healthcare workers and frontline workers, we can significantly cut down those casualty numbers. So be optimistic, just like Bill Lapsies, a World War II veteran and Spanish flu survivor who recently became the oldest Miley Cyrus survivor at the age of 104. So those are 50 statistics that show us how the world is responding to this Miley Cyrus event. But at the end of the day, we can only control the areas around us. So I implore each and every one of you watching this right now, be the best version of yourself. If we stick together, we can definitely make it through this. Generation Films, out.